This week we're focusing on studying the nose. To simplify the shape of the nose, first imagine it within the volume that surrounds it, which can be visualized as a three-dimensional shape with a trapezoidal plan. The lower trapezoid sits on the nasal cartilage, with one side on the nasal wings while the upper trapezoid sits on the nasal bone. When viewed from different angles, the nose appears similar to the shape shown in the image. Based on the shape of the nose, this three-dimensional volume can change shape, with each of its planes may possibly possibly become larger or smaller. Now that we've simplified the shape of the nose, let's move on to different parts of the nose. The nose is made up of fat, cartilage, and bone. The fat is located in the nostrils. The nasal cartilage appears as a prism-like shape from the front, and the lower cartilage is located next to the nostrils, which are made of fat. Now let's study the nose from a reference. Noses have different shapes and what is important is to understand the different parts of the nose. Let's start by studying the volume that nose occupies. In general, when we draw from reference, we pay attention to the shape of the parts, the perspective and the overlap, which helps us understand the form better. I begin with the trapezoid at the top of the nose and draw its sides. The upper nasal cartilage tapers off when it meets the lower cartilage. Drawing the edges and understanding the thickness of each part helps us comprehend the reasons behind changes in values during shading. Fibrofatty tissue curve towards the nostrils and have a certain thickness. The connection between the nostrils and cartilage also has a defined edge. Now let's draw the nose from several common angles. We'll start from the front view. First I try to identify the parts of the nose from the reference. In this image, the yellow color indicates the nasal Wings. Red indicates the lower cartilage and blue indicates the upper cartilage. Green represents the nasal bone. I try to keep the proportions at a rough 3 to 1 ratio. First, draw the volume that the nose occupies. We start with the nostrils as they define the position of the nose on the face. Then we draw the nostrils and the connection they have with the tip of the nose. Next, we draw the sides of the nose and its edges, adding contours to grasp the volume of the nose. Now let's draw the nose in profile. Pay attention to the proportions that determine the lowest point of the nose on the face, meaning the tip of the nose, which is aligned with the line passing through the nasal veins, not the tip of the nose. The tip of the nose might be tilted upwards, lying above this line, right on it or below it. In this case, it's crucial to draw the nasal veins and nostrils accurately, as they sit behind the lower cartilage. This gives the nose either a realistic or cartoonish appearance. In each of our studies, we focus on overlaps, the thickness and edges of different parts, and their perspective. Now let's draw the nose from below. When viewed from below, the upper cartilage and nasal bone are hidden behind the lower plane of the nose, meaning they are behind the lower cartilage, and due to perspective, other parts of the nose might not be visible, sometimes even covering parts of the eye. This coverage of eyes can also be seen when looking at the head from different angles. As you can see in this video, which I sped up significantly, I'm drawing a nose from a reference, with the head turned and the nose drawn from different angles. These exercises help us when we create our own characters, or want to draw a face from a reference at different angles, so we know how to solve its perspective and overlaps. To draw a nose from different angles based on a reference, you can start by finding different references of noses from various angles, or use a model photograph from different angles. Over time, it becomes easier to visualize how a nose looks from different angles. However, this is a challenging exercise, one that I find very difficult. I've heard from various artists on YouTube or other platforms like Instagram that it's tough for them to predict how a face or a specific facial feature will look from different angles. How to draw it correctly to convey the subject. Our goal with the studies is to gain a general understanding of how each feature appears from different angles, so that when we draw from a reference, we can do with full awareness and accurately depict everything. This was the video for this week, thank you so much for watching and I hope it's been helpful. If you have any questions or suggestions for the next video, or if you have a topic you'd like to see covered, please let me know in the comments. Also, don't forget that you can send me your work, I'd be happy to see you. Until the next video, where we'll focus on drawing ears, goodbye.